God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Psalm 19 Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream, they fade away, suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure, we are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are threescore years and ten, or if our strength endures even for school, yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for soon they pass away and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us and for the years in which we have seen advers adversity. Show your servants your works and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, O prosper the work of our hands. Life is short. The days of our life are three score years and ten, or maybe four score years, maybe more if the Lord permits. But we should be taught, we should seek the Lord that he teaches us to number our days so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. We should consider this. Our days on the earth are short, but eternity is long. Let's make sure we're living for eternity. And Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your love early in the morning and your faithfulness at night time, upon the ten-stringed instrument upon the harp, and to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your acts, and I sing aloud of the work of your hands. O Lord, how glorious are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. The senseless do not know, nor do fools understand that though the wicked sprout like grass and all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is only to be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, shall be exalted for evermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my own you have exalted, like the horns of the wild ox, I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes will look down on my foes, my ears shall hear of the ruin of the evildoers who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age, they shall be vigorous and in full leaf, that they may show that the Lord is true. He is my rock, there is no unrighteousness in him. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises to your name, O Most High. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 to 17 Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build of me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving around in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, 
Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Know therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus say is the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be a prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house, my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod, such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. David's heart was to build a house for the Lord, not something God desired or wanted at that time, but uh, God was pleased with David's heart. However, it was David's son who would build the temple, it was Solomon who built the temple as we know. But there the Lord made a promise to the house of David that, he, that, that there would be a kingdom established forever. Now, of course, looking at human history, it would seem that that was not true because at the time of the exile, David, uh, David's family stopped being kings of Israel. Um, and there's been no king of David's line ever since. However, it will be fulfilled in Jesus, his throne. Uh, will be forever. He is the descendant of David who is coming to uh, establish his kingdom which will never pass away. Acts 7 44-53 Stephen continues his testimony uh, before the council of Israel. Our ancestors had a tent of testimony in the wilderness as God directed when he spoke to Moses ordering him to make it according to the pattern he had seen. Our ancestors in turn brought it in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our ancestors. And it was there until the time of David who found favour with God and asked that he might find a dwelling place for the house of J Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him, yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. Whoa, the Stephen really turns. He's been going through this history of Israel, and suddenly he applies it to their hearts and says, you're just like all those people in the past. You received this word from the Lord. You have this great inheritance of faith and of God blessing your nation, and yet you have rejected him. I guess our preaching should be like that. We tell the great stories of God and then we make an application to the hearts of our hearers. Stephen was so brave. Let us be so brave also in our preaching of the word. Lord, we lift up to you this day the tasks you called us to complete. Whether we are working alone today or whether we're working with others, we pray that, Lord, you will be at the centre of the work that we do, that we may bring honour to you and glory to your name. Lord, we lift up the world in which we live. We lift up the church. We pray especially for persecuted Christians. We pray, Lord, that you will uh, bless and protect your people in places like Pakistan, Iran, 
Syria and other places, especially across the Middle East, where your church faces such severe persecution. Lord, we pray that you will uh, protect and strengthen the, the witness of those suffering saints. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>